today we talk about the spirit of excellence. And when I was asking God, like, God, what do you want us to talk about today? That's what came to me, the spirit of excellence. I'm like, okay, spirit of excellence. Okay, let's see how that goes. As I said, don't forget to invite somebody. The spirit of excellence. The spirit. Of, so how we will define excellence? How will you define excellence? Excellence. What is excellence? What does it mean to be excellent? How will you define excellence? The spirit of excellence. How will you define it? Very important topic. Very is a great aspect of our lives. Can anybody define excellence or excellent? Um, but Pastor Emmanuel, don't worry. The information will be the, the, should be given very soon. You know, all the details will be provided by God's grace. So, how will you define excellence? How will you define excellence? Anybody? Okay. Um. Um. Uh. Who do I call now? Okay. Thank you, Pastor Francis. Uh, thank you, Daddy. Uh, without blemish. Um. Without blemish. Um. Okay. Uh, Pastor Diron, hope you are doing well. How will How will you define um excellence? How we define excellence, sir? Uh, who else again do I have here? Asongani. Yeah, you excellence define? would be continuous improvement, constantly finding ways of doing it better and better. Thank you, sir. You you, you picked to my notes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Let me know. Sorry, sir. Day. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, Sister Finn said to be outstanding. Sister Grace Oluwani Femi said the same thing, to be outstanding. That's what excellence is. Now, if you look at glory, there's a perfection in glory. Glory is divine perfection. You know, our theme for the month of August is glory. So glory is div divine perfection, where God perfects all that concerns you, where God makes you the best version of yourself. Glory amplifies you. You know, if go, please go watch the sermon on glory. Glory is your identity. Glory is what God has called you to be. And glory is in degrees. Glory is the glory of the sun, is the glory of the moon. So glory is divine perfection. Sadiq Bayou says glory, I mean, excellence is extremely great. Thank you very much. Now let's keep it moving. What is excellence? It's the pursuit of perfection. But it's not perfection. We'll look at that later. The pursuit of a perfection is not perfection. But we look at that. It's commitment to improvement. Commitment to improve. How do I improve? How do I get better? You know, sometimes when I watch athletes, you know, let's say NBA, basketball, maybe there's a player that can't shoot. So during the summer, he goes and works on his shooting. So when he comes back during this, after the summer and he's playing in the fall, during the preseason game, he's shooting the basketball. You know, during the season, he's shooting the basketball. Or a player that is not strong, we go and work and build muscle. You know, Michael Jordan, when he faced the Pistons, for those that don't know, those follow me. When he faced the Pistons, that's the Detroit Pistons. He was weak, he was small, and they beat him up badly. I mean, so that summer, he got a, a coach, somebody that we helped him in the weight room, and he bulked up. He got stronger. And they always said that those guys made him strong. So he lost a series in the playoffs. He came back the next year and beat them badly. And of course, he went on to win a couple of championships, six championships. What am I trying to say to you, ladies and gentlemen? It is commitment to improvement. You have gotten beat up. You have gotten something happened. You just get up and improve. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And there's a spirit of excellence. Look at the book of Daniel 6, 3 to 4. Daniel 6, 3 to 4. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps. Because an excellent spirit was in him. And who is that excellent spirit? It's the Holy Spirit. An excellent spirit was in him. So the Holy Spirit was giving him details on what to do, how to do it, what to say. And let's continue. And the king gave thoughts to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. When you are excellent, people get jealous of you. When you are excellent, I'm getting ahead of myself. Promotion is your, 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 your lot. I mean, people will be promoted. You stand out when you are excellent. When you are excellent, great people see you. Destiny helpers will look for you. That is what is called excellent. And the spirit of excellence comes from the Holy Spirit. That distinguishes you. Look at this. Then this Daniel distinguished himself 
There were other governors, but Daniel was different because of the spirit of excellence. I decree and declare over you, over me, over PPC, over the work of our hands, that we will enjoy excellence, that the spirit of excellence will come on us in the name of Jesus. Say loud amen. A loud amen. Amen and amen. You know, um, before I continue, about two weeks ago, last week, I was on call. I know for when you're on call, that means that they can, if there's any emergency, they can call you. So they can call you at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., <laughs> anytime, 7 p.m. After work hours, for the whole week, you are, you'll be called. So I was just working. I was in my home office, and it was like maybe 1 a.m. And of course, I got called. And anytime you get called, you're like, oh, dang it. Why are they calling me? <laughs> And the person said they needed me to help them to configure a firewall policy. And maybe the other firewall wasn't working or the policy wasn't working. And I did it. And the person was surprised. And the person was like, oh, you can go. I said, no, no, no. I waited for the person to test to make sure that it was working. And there was another firewall that needed to be implemented by another group. I waited for that group to implement the fire. It took almost two hours. When everything was satisfied, I left. And that was it. A week later, I got an email from the company and they were like, hey, we want um, this person wants to recognize you. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> For your work and your work ethic, I was very surprised. I just did it like me just doing a job, doing my job. And this person sent an email and, of course, recognized me and all that stuff. The company sent an email, gave me some points, all that. What am I trying to say to you, and ladies and gentlemen? When the spirit of excellence comes on you, it distinguishes you. You do things better than other people. Not because other people are watching you. Just because you want it to be done well. Do you know, even in church, when they give me an assignment, I want it to be excellent. I hate, medio I, I hate mediocrity. Amen. A any department you put under me or if I'm in charge of, I want it to grow. That's why I always ask you guys to invite me to PPC because I, want, I know that we can reach more people. God can transform lives. Like the message we heard last week is not only for us, it's for other people to hear. Amen. So God is saying to you and me that there must be a spirit of excellence that drives you, not because you are getting paid, but because the one who sees all things, the one who knows all things can reward you. Amen. Let's keep it moving. So what is excellence? It is refusal to embrace mediocrity. There are people that go with the flow. It is refusal to embrace mediocrity. You are saying to yourself, I can be better than this. Things can be better than this. Things can flow better. It is refused. See, don't embrace mediocrity. There are many Christians that are praying, but they are, the answer to their prayer is excellence. Amen. They are praying, God bless me. But what God has blessed you with, have you displayed excellence in, excellence in it? Amen. Amen. So God is saying to you and me, there must be a spirit of excellence. You know, there's some people when they sell meat pie, for those that are like snacks, they just put it inside one ziplock and give it to you. I know that person, when she sells a meat pie, she wraps it in a nice container and puts her name on it. Oh, excellence. Somebody will sell meat pie and put it in a ziplock and give it to you. Another person will wrap it, put it in a nice container and give it to you. Which one will you like? Ladies and gentlemen, many of the answers to your prayer is embracing excellence. When you are excellent, you are excellent, excuse me, you get people to change. People patronize you when you are excellent. Let's continue. Excellence is a mindset. Excellence is a mindset. It means that this thing must be done well. You must have that mindset of excellence. That's why the Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, you do it well. It is at doing and at performing your last accomplishments. At doing and at performing. So you are not resting on your laurels. The past is the past. What I'm doing now, is it excellent? Is it better than what I've done in the past? Amen. It is our doing and our performing your last accomplishment. Those who live in the past never make progress. Amen. It is doing something and asking the question, would God be pleased with this work? Would God be pleased with what I'm doing? Would God be pleased with this thing? That is what is called excellence. I remember when we first started PPC. The way you are saying, this is not the hardest slide used to be. I used to use PowerPoint slide, the regular Microsoft. <laughs> Thank God for people that will give comments and say, hey, ah. I used to use PowerPoint slide. PowerPoint has a, I mean, there are some things that you can't do with PowerPoint. I'm being honest with you. 
See, when you are excellent, you keep getting better and better. Every year should be an improvement on itself. Every month should be an improvement on itself. Amen. So God is saying to you and me that we must embrace the spirit of excellence. And I realize that where we come from, so those that come from Africa, they don't have that spirit in them. Many of them don't embrace that spirit. Many are mediocre. They follow the status quo. Because people don't do their best, they don't do their best. Because people just do barely get, get, barely get by, they do the same thing. May God help us in Jesus' name. You must, see, when you are excellent, you are distinguished. You know what thing I like about living faith? That's um, winners. They are excellent. I'm telling you, it's in their blood. You must embrace that spirit. Thank you, man. Nigerian vendors, if you are, if you are providing services, there's something that must make you stand out. Excellence. Excellence. One, one day, when I was in college, me and my friends go get a haircut. And of course, with haircuts, you have to be very careful. <laughs> so, of course, thank God, because that was my first time going to the barber saloon, I think. The person that got my hair did a good job. But my friend, that guy messed it up, and he was angry. The worst, worst way to piss the man, piss the man off is to mess up his airline or something like that. Excellence means you do your job well. Let's keep it moving because there's so much to cover. And you look at the book of Proverbs 17, 27. Proverbs 17, 27. He that hath knowledge, spirit his word. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. A man, so it takes understanding to be excellent. For someone to sit down and think, it takes understanding to be excellent. Look at, the, uh, of course, um, um, Daniel chapter 5. 12, he says, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences, just with that way, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel. And ex See, even unbelievers saw excellence in Daniel. The king saw it, governor saw it, people saw it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And of course, verse 14, and even head of the spirit, see that there, of course, of God is in thee. That, that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee, Daniel. Amen. That that my one mentioned is true. <laughs> Any wedding that you... Oh, for those that are ready to marry, those pray that God will give you good vendors. Say, say loud, amen. Even if you have not found your guy, just pray. Say, say amen. Don't say amen. Say amen. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Me, myself, I'm, oh, I don't go to, oh, let's keep it moving. <laughs> Some vendors can, oh, Lord, let's, amen. If you, if you don't say amen, yeah, let me not, yeah, we are children of God. Let's keep it moving. Excellent Bible characters. Excellent Bible characters. Daniel. Daniel was excellent. We know Daniel. Joseph, he had the highest ethical standards. He had the highest ethical standards. Genesis chapter 45. You see there that Joseph said that I'm the father to Pharaoh. You know, my dad was preaching on it on Sunday and I, it stood out to me when he mentioned that scripture. Look at the book of Genesis 45. Let's put our eyes on it. Genesis 45. Genesis 45. I like that scripture. Verse 8. He says, So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, he had made me a father to Pharaoh. See, Joseph was so excellent in his work that Pharaoh forgot about his position. He had made me a father. That means that if I tell Pharaoh to kneel down, he will kneel down. That's it. If I tell Pharaoh not to leave his house for the next one week, he will. He, I mean, he was so much trusted by Pharaoh because an excellent spirit was in Joseph. Same thing when he was in Potiphar's house. See, when God puts in you the spirit of excellence, you are faithful in small. There are many people that feel like, oh, when God gives me a big opportunity, it starts with what you are doing now. From when Joseph was in his father's house, he was faithful. When he was in Potiphar's house, he was faithful. He was excellent. So by the time he was in prison, he was excellent. So when he got to the throne, there is no how he didn't have that spirit in him. Don't think that God will bless you with more when you are not faithful in small. It's your faithfulness in small that brings the more to you. We grow in sizes, ladies and gentlemen. We grow in size. And God is saying to you and me that you need, I need the spirit of excellence. So it means that when you are excellent, you keep improving. If you play the drums, if you sing, you watch what people that are better than you. You practice. Your job is to improve and get better. You work on your voice, whatever it is. 
God is saying to you, you watch videos. Even as a pastor, a man of, I watch other men of God. Men, in most cases, if I'm not chilling, I'm listening to a sermon, I'm telling you most, our music, if I'm not relaxing, in most cases, if you find me one way or the other, either I'm reading, I'm listening to a man of God, I'm praying by God's grace, not as if I'm, I'm God is helping me. Uphold the spirit of excellence. Another one, David was good at solving challenges. David was a man that was excellent. He was so excellent that even Saul was afraid of him. He would look at the book. He said, Saul, Saul wanted to pin him to the wall. Saul threw a javelin at, at David twice, and David escaped, and Saul was afraid. And Saul, and David behaved himself wisely. Of course, Deborah was an exceptional leader. Back in the day, in a, matriarch, or was it a patriarch society, Deborah was a leader. Can you imagine a woman leader? In a, in a society where men were, were held to a, to a higher standard than women, Deborah stood out. She was the life of Lapidot. Mommy Pastor, that's my mom, talked about it in a program um, this past weekend. And I heard where she was talking. She, it was a women program, but I, I joined. She was the wife of Lapidot. Lapidot, we don't know anything about Lapidot. I don't know, I, I don't know anybody that is named Lapidot. I know a lot of Deborahs, Deborah. I know a bunch of, but I don't know anybody named Lapidot, man. But Deborah was so exceptional that even her husband was okay. He wasn't jealous of her. He wasn't threatened by leadership. Deborah was an exceptional leader. Amen. Let's keep it moving. A spirit of excellence is a heart attitude. If you are going to see promotion, you must maintain a good attitude regardless of what other people do to you and regardless of circumstances. Let me tell you something about excellence. It's expensive. Excellence is what? It's expensive. Excellence will require more from you. Okay, we had a youth program last week. Do you want to invite a drummer? Invite a keyboardist? <laughs> pay them? Thank God, we didn't have to pay a drummer this time. You get the point? Food? See, when you are believing God for excellence, it shows in everything. It shows, it shows, and it is expensive. You have to pay. See, you pay for excellence. It's not free. If you are trying to get something free, my brother, you are not ready. Excellence requires you to pay. I know I see that in also Apostle Selma ministry. I mentioned mention this. Is, when they, even when you see them, when you, when you go to their meetings, you see the spirit of excellence from their ushers. It is expensive. Excellence will cost you. Excellence is not free. <laughs> it will cost you your time. It will cost you your effort. It will cost you prayer. It will cost you money. So you do everything to be excellent. You serve with excellence. You lead with excellence. You work with excellence. You dress excellently. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, work on your appearance. You know, this thing I learned it years ago. Thank God I learned it in my early 20s. I learned it years before I didn't care. Even hair, you know, I, oh, I don't leave my beard. Just, mm -mm -mm. You dress excellently. Don't dress like someone that is going to the farm. Forgive me. I'm not trying to be mean. Even at home, sometimes it's good to, <laughs> it's good to dress it. A man of God said that he told his wife one time to perish one cloth. He said she wears the cloth all the time. He's like, dude, you wear this cloth all the freaking time, man. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I should be more all the time. I'm sorry, guys. Forgive me. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, in your dressing, be excellent. In your appearance, be excellent. When Joseph was going to see um, Pharaoh, he shaved. He dressed up himself. He looked good. As I said, even it was my one of my sisters that brought it up years ago. Like, bro, you need to, man, you need to work on your appearance. Even my mom one time. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm sharing my own journey to excellence. So don't think that just came to where I was. People had to encourage me. <laughs> I didn't care before. Excellence in leadership, excellence in your service. If you are serving in a department, let your excellence show. When you are not there, it will be evident that somebody is missing. Work with excellence in your job, in your secular work. In your service to God, be excellent. For those that are not excellent, why are they not excellent? It's because they are selfish. They are lazy. And some of them are disinterested. Please don't be disinterested in excellence. If you are not interested in excellence, you will lose your relevance. Anybody not interested in excellence will not be relevant. Those that are relevant are excellent. Amen. Those that are relevant are excellent. I've not gone to a church and that church does stood out to you by their excellence. From the parking lot, holy police, those that are serving in the parking lot, to the greeters that you meet, 
to the ushers that you encounter, to the praise and worship, to the sermon, you're like, whoa, I'm blown away. Let me tell you, excellence makes you relevant. There's no hard, it's not being your subconscious. Even if you are visiting that city, the next time you come there, you will go. You will join them online. Amen. Excellence makes you relevant. Excellence helps you to stand out. Excellence keeps you current. Excellence brings the right people to you. The right people to you. Amen. And of course, Colossians 3, 23 says, whatever you do, work heartily and the Lord for the Lord and not unto men. Whatever you do, work heartily and it's for the Lord, not unto men. Amen. Now, excellence is not the same thing as perfectionism. Before we continue, anybody have any comments before we move on? You know, it's praise, praise chat. So the chat part is here now. Any comments? Any comments? Any contributions? Any comments or contributions to this in the area of excellence? Any contributions? Any comments in regards to excellence? Maybe your personal work with excellence or what you have seen, your observation or anything the Lord is putting in your heart? Anybody? I will call names who. Torisha, <laughs> do you have any comments? I don't even in a place where you can talk. Torisha, do you have any comments on this? Pastor George Ajayi, do you have any comments on this one as well? Yeah, let's hear. Yeah. Nobody's safe. Thank you, Pastor Emmanuel. Excellence is attractive. Excellence is attractive. Ex I know what God normally does. Do, what God will do. When God wants to bless you, God will put you in a place that will make you uncomfortable. And God will put you in a place where your eyes will be open. I went to a church called um, House on the Rock in Lagos. I went there. My, oh Lord have mercy. I've been to some churches where you're like, whoa. So that when I'm in Lagos, I just go there. Because when you go to other churches, when you go back to your own church, you know <laughs> there are some things you will add. I'm, you know, I just, just sit down, just observe. Many times when I go to a church, you just sit down, hear the word of God and observe. Oh, you will see some, ex you will see excellence per, 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 where it is, per excellence. Thank you. And of course, Sister Amy says, excellence sets you apart for pe from people. Thank you very much. Maywa, you were about to say something. You raise your hand. Sister Maywa. Yeah, I was just going to say, since you were calling people to contribute, I, I feel like I'm just, I'm so grateful you're teaching this. I feel like these are the things that they were supposed to teach us in college. Um, Just, just regular basic things like this and there's something about people who are excellent and work that is excellent it's not how much you advertise it's not how much you pray some things are not that spiritual some things are not it's not i i get i get that we live in a spiritual world i get that there's a place for prayers i'm not, i mean but i have just worked with some some people some vendors that children of god have such a bad reputation I know I was talking to someone and they were looking to hire, you know, in a role and they were just letting me know. And they were like, oh, no, I'll never hire this person. And that person was a Christian, like belonging to the same denomination that I went to. And it was such a testimony because they were like, no, this person, other person is Muslim. But they were like, they're excellent. They will do a great job. And I'm like, I'm sure that person is probably praying, going for six hour prayers like we had, saying, God, have mercy. And they are so slothful and very, you know, very average. I can't explain it. I just feel like if you've experienced it, maybe, you know, like I said about my weddings, I've experienced like hiring Nigerian vendors, no, no shade to any Nigerian. I'm Nigerian too. And the experience was just like the wedding was already stressful, but the vendors added, the vendors were 99.9% .9 of the stress that I went through on my wedding day. And it's just because people are just not excellent. So I just want to just do this. I like, it's not just spiritual. It's not just going to the mount to pray. Look at your work. Look at the output. Ask people to give you like a good, just, you know, look at me. Ascertain me. Like what, how am I doing? And how do you, how do you like the work that I, like honestly? So I just want to just throw that in there. Thank you very much. Excellence is very important. Okay. Let me give an example. Many people you say they're excellent and they come late. You can't go late to something when you are excellent. You cannot. You cannot. Okay, you're a vendor. And you know you're supposed to be somewhere. Even if there's going to be traffic, don't you think that you should plan the time? Okay, I know that there'll be two-hour traffic. Let me leave early. Do you know it's best to get somewhere early than get there late? I'll be to, maybe you go, go to a birthday party and you're waiting for the right woman to come. 
<laughs> you are waiting for the friend that said that he's giving the message swallow. I don't want to because of the, no, there are other food that are here, there are other cultures here. So let me not mention the food. And I'll, thank you, Sister Lua Dusin. Feedback and review is important. Oh, Lord, feedback. You know, and I like that's why I said, like that person I said that now, that she's selling meat pie. Someone put it in Ziploc. This one put wrapped it. She now asked later, how was what was your thought about this, my food? How was it? I said, oh, this was very good. Okay, the puff puff, the sumo sugar. But I said in a nice way. A very nice way. Very, you know, makes my taste bold, but there's a bunch of sugar in it. But of course, everything else was really good. She's like, thank you. See, feedback and reviews help. And you know one thing I realized that even in today's culture, do you know that if you are booking Airbnb, what do you look at if you're booking Airbnb? Ladies and gentlemen, if you so if you are familiar, you look at what? The reviews. Am I right? If you are going to even get a company to come to your house, in most cases, you go on Google reviews to look at that company. That's why many companies, when they work and they come and they do a good job, they'll ask you, they say, please leave us a good review. Even buy things online, even on Amazon, you look at what? The review. Ladies and gentlemen, it is good to be excellent. It is good to be excellent. It pays to be excellent. It pays to be excellent. God himself is excellent. He said, oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. When God looked at what he had made, look at the book of Genesis chapter 1. He said he saw that it was good. God looked at everything. This is good. God is excellent. You must be excellent. And you know one thing about excellent people is that they hire people that to their, to their weakness. They get people that can complement their weakness. They are very open to constructive criticism. They are. They are. You know, some people can dish it out and they can't take it. <laughs> if you are not, if you are, you know, and I, I will say something. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to have tough skin. Some people here don't have tough skin. You have to have tough skin. Your skin, see, when people give you to you, bow, and it enters, <laughs> go back and just review it. What this person said. Is it true? Holy Spirit. Talk with the Holy Spirit about it. You need to have tough skin to be excellent. Amen. When you meet with your supervisor, that may not be because of time. Your supervisor gives you feedback. Amen. Let's keep it moving so that we are not... With... Excellence is not the same as perfectionism. God is not asking you to be a perfectionist. He's asking you to be excellent. Perfectionism will kill you. Excellence will promote you. Please, I'm not saying you should be Perfect. Perfectionism will destroy you. God is saying be excellent. Give it your best. When you are excellent, you'll be promoted. When you do your job to the best of your ability, you'll be trusted. When they are laying people off, by God's grace, they will not lay you off in Jesus' name. Amen. It shows in your excellence. Let's keep it moving. What is the importance of excellence? Promotion. Look at the book of Psalm 75, 67. We say, for promotion come neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another. An excellent spirit will cause you to be promoted in business, in ministry, or at home with your family. When you are excellent, you will be promoted. You will not be stagnant. Number two, when you are excellent, I don't know, I didn't take that one out. You have the secret sauce. It distinguishes you. When you are excellent, you are distinguished. Do you know when you are excellent, you can name your price? Let's say everybody is charging $100. You can charge $250 because you are excellent. Amen. When you are excellent, your, your reputation precedes you. People know that what they are getting from you is the best. Amen. I remember I was doing photo shoot. I was in Lagos. I was doing photo shoot with my wife. And we wanted to save money. So we chose somebody else. We have somebody that we use in our family for photo. Most of our photos, we, we have a guy that we use. And the guy is good. The guy, is, I would say, is excellent. But the, when you ask the guy, the guy will give one ridiculous amount. So we're like, you know what? Let's just use another person. You know, we, had, we ended up carrying the pictures that that person took. And we sent it to, <laughs> to the other guy. So we have to... See, when you try to cut corners, sometimes you will pay for it. Amen. When you are excellent, it is, the pictures that we took, we are now to send to the other guy to help us to edit those pictures. So in the long run, we are just paid the money and gotten the edited pictures and gotten some good pictures. Amen. So I'm trying to say to you ladies and gentlemen, when you are excellent, it distinguishes you. You can name your price. I'm telling you. 
when they want to promote or when they're asking you how much do you want, you can tell them, hey, based on what I'm giving to your company, this is what I am wanting, this is what I want from you guys. Amen. And I put here, what are the characteristics of those that are excellent? They have great character. They have integrity. They are honest. They are compassionate. They are meek. They have great work ethic. They are always learning. Ladies and gentlemen, learning does not stop with school. Learning does not stop with school. It continues after school. You keep learning. You keep growing. You keep improving. They are bold. They have a positive attitude. They are faithful. They are Christ-like. They are persistent. They are goal-oriented. These are characteristics of those that are excellent. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how do you operate in the spirit of excellence? How? Strive to give your best. Strive to give your best. You know what I like about the U.S.? Do not for anybody that wins the gold medal. You know, we just had the, the Olympics in Paris. Now, it's moving to LA. Do not, if you had won the 100 meters gold medal in Paris, it does not mean that you will qualify for the one in LA. Do you know that? They have heat. They have trials. So it means that if you don't meet the parameters for the trials for the Olympics in LA, Los Angeles, you will not go. So even if you won the 100 meters in swimming, if you don't keep improving and getting better, if another phenom comes and beats you, you will not represent the U.S. So strive to give your best. Give your best. If you can't give your best, don't even start it. <coughs> if you are giving me something, I must know that I can do it. And the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It does not mean that you will not make mistakes. It does not mean that things will not happen or things will happen. But God is saying that you strive to give your best. Tell your neighbor, I will give my best. Put it on the, on the, on the, on the chat. Post it, I will give my best. I will give my best. Put it on the chat. I will give my best. Put it, I will give my best. Strive to give your best. Don't, because other people are not giving their best, don't mean that you should not give your best. People are watching you. People are, I'm telling you. People know who give their best and who don't. Strive to give your best. Strive to give your best. Strive to give your best. Even if it comes to you naturally. You know, before, when I used to, when I used to be, years ago, when I used to take Sunday school, let me tell you, I can carry, I can open the Sunday school manual and just start teaching. <laughs> but it's a gift by the grace of God. So that I will come to Sunday school class, I'll ask them, I say, what's our formal topic? What, what, do you, what do you do last week? Because I don't know what. I will come in by the grace of God, open it and start teaching. But I don't realize that anytime I even do a review, a personal review of this Sunday school topic, God gives me insight. So when I come the next day, there is something to say. Amen. When I come the next, on Sunday, on Saturday, maybe I go over the, the Sunday school topic, I review it, I put some notes in my book. When I come to the class the next day, there is something, God has deposited in me something to say to the class. Amen. Be detail-oriented, number two. Ask yourself, is this good? What can be added? What can be improved? What can be taken away from this? Did I give it my all? Will God be pleased with this? Am I even pleased with this work? When you write an essay, do you just turn the essay like that? You review the essay. You proofread it. So when you are in the things of, of your work, you become detail-oriented. Naturally, ladies and gentlemen, I am not detail-oriented. I am not. But over the years, I've come to a point where I realized that I have to be detail-oriented. Amen. So how do you operate in the spirit of excellence? Number three, when working for someone, do the job like you want someone to do the job for you. Amen. So when you are working for somebody, do it the way, if you are hired somebody, you want them to do that job for you. Amen. When you, so sometimes when I'm, I have to be very careful that I'm having, spending time with family. Because sometimes I get so over when we work. <laughs> Even to the night I'm working. Amen. When you work, work for somebody like you want somebody to work for you. When you lead, lead well. When you follow, follow well. Amen. And number four, be determined. If you are committed to the spirit of excellence, you are also going to need determination. Excellence takes determination. When I was in Lagos, I attended the church or Lagos Redemption Camp, the Redemption City. And that pastor, I, I must give it to him. In a place like Nigeria, where people are not excellent, that man was very excellent. The only place you see that excellence is maybe 
island, maybe Lekki, you know, for those that know Nigeria, Lekki or, you know, Victoria Island, all those two churches. In his church, where you enter, they have holy police to direct you in your parking. They have greeters. Their choir is excellent. The sermon is good. Of course, people will come to the church. The church was, the, I think it's the biggest church in camp, Redemption City. They have the highest attendance. Why? Because of excellence. And excellence is expensive. He said he had to pay more money for the banner they put outside. He could have just done one rubbish banner. But he said because of excellence, he had to do that. So anybody that is under him knows that you can't bring anything less than excellence to him. So if you're a leader under him, if you are presenting anything, it has to be excellent. Amen. You, you will check yourself at the door before you meet him. And that's the spirit I even want to cultivate in PPC. The spirit of, you can't bring anything, you can't be haphazard. No! You cannot be, you can't do that here. Amen. So God is saying to you and me that you operate in the spirit and the realm of excellence. And I declare and declare that God will put that spirit on you and me in Jesus' name. Say a loud amen. Say a louder amen. Let me tell you something. If you don't operate in the spirit of excellence, you may lose opportunities. Can you imagine it when Joseph got to, put it to the throne? He became the second in command to Pharaoh and he wasn't excellent. He would have lost his opportunity. How would he have delivered the Israelites from famine? Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not excellent, you may lose opportunities. You are praying and praying and praying. God answers your prayer. Be excellent. Unless, if you don't have that spirit of excellence, you will lose opportunities. And you will not lose opportunities in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. You will not lose opportunities in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So God is saying to you and me, ladies and gentlemen, be excellent. Let's pray. Say, my father, my father, help me to be excellent. Pray. My father, my father, help me to be excellent. Pray that prayer quickly. I take the spirit of excellence. I decree and declare that I will be excellent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help me to be perfect in you. Help me to be excellent. Everything I do, let it come forth with excellence. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Anybody have any contributions? Any comments? Any contributions? Any comments? You autograph your work with excellence. Anybody, before we round off, any contributions? Anything you do, autograph it with excellence. Anything, anything. If they ask you to take Sunday school, if they ask you to take Bible study, if they ask you to just take announcements, Everything you do must be autographed to it. And the spirit of God comes upon you and gives you that excellent spirit. Amen. Anybody else? Any contributions? Hey, Pastor Emmanuel Tosin. Any contributions or comments? Before we round off for tonight. Anybody else? Gary. Long time. <laughs> any comments or contributions? Anybody have any comments or contributions before we round off? On the spirit of excellence. So I want to, to, to encourage you. Please, anything you do from now on, don't be mediocre. Even in school, give it your all. Be excellent. If you decide to enter a relationship, leading to marriage, be excellent. Improve on yourself. Many people get comfortable. You know, that's the, 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 the enemy of excellence is, is comfortability. Is that what you use? And the Bible says, what then are that is? Woe to them. People that just take things, they don't improve on themselves. It shows later. Please be excellent. Amen. Be excellent. Work on yourself. Go to the gym. You know, work on your diction. Sometimes people, some will say, hey, what you said, the way you said it, add a twin accent to it. I'll say, okay, I'll work on it. I'm, see, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not someone that if you tell me something, like, ah, why is my, no, 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 no. I want to be better. So if you come and meet me and say, Please, this thing, can you improve on it? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Go for a language class. Toastmasters. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to give you these examples. You know, work on your accent. Whatever it is, improve on yourself. Be excellent. Read books. You know, pray more. Work with the Holy Spirit. I will stop there. Any contribution before we round off? Any other contributions? Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for answering. And also, our excellence in improving. Also, we have to invite people to, to PPC. 
And I pray, God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not given your life to Jesus, if you want to dedicate your life to Jesus, just say, Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. Take my life and do something with it. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Father, have mercy on those that ask you for your mercy, Lord. Help them to know you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.